Hey guys, today we're planting pumpkins, and in this video I'm going to show you everything you need to know A to Z to grow pumpkins at home, either from seed or from transplants that you grow yourself or get from the garden center. Now last year I grew a bunch of pumpkins in this area right here, and they were so much fun. We ate some, we had plenty to decorate for fall, we had all shapes and sizes, and I want to do the same thing this year. But this year, they're not gonna be growing here. And it's not because it's a crop rotation thing. It's simply because this area, like I mentioned on the, the last video, is going to be our future formal Eng English garden. And I was planning on starting that in the fall and winter of this year, but it looks like due to some changes in plan, it might be happening a lot sooner than that. So I'll be talking about that soon, either on this channel or on Next Level Homestead, but you'll learn about that in a couple of weeks. This year, they are going to be a part of the cottage garden. And so right here in this area, it's going to be pumpkins. And then that area back up in there is going to be pumpkins. So I've already done the rototilling of this lower section. Tilling is not something I do very often, but it is a necessity sometimes. You know, this area here had a lot of succulents in it, and those have very thick matted root systems. And so I just want to go through with the tiller and turn everything over and be able to rake any of those roots out that are still left. Okay, so I've got everything tilled up and very nice soil to plant into. And let me go through the different varieties that I'm going to be growing. And these do include a couple of melons, so cantaloupe and uh, watermelon. So for the pumpkins, flat white, jack-o'-lantern, small sugar, crimson sweet no, number 20. Oh, that must be a melon. And I've got a honeydew in here, porcelain princess, black cat, sugar baby watermelon, Hale's best cantaloupe, moringa squash, blue doll, casperita or casperita, I'll put the right name on the screen. Jaradale and Snowball. So let's talk about some of the requirements for pumpkins and melons. They are warm season lovers. Now we haven't had much warm weather here at all and here we are almost the middle of June. So if you do have a short season, you can start these indoors like I did and then bring them out when your soil temperature is about 65 degrees, definitely after the danger of frost has passed. Now, they like full sun, and there's no skimping on this. They need full sun to grow well and to produce. So we're talking six to eight hours of full sun every day. So let's talk about spacing. Pumpkins and melons, there's no way around it. They take up a lot of garden real estate. They spread and ramble throughout the whole season. Stick around because toward the end, I'm gonna show you how you can grow these even in the smallest of gardens. They like really fertile soil, so I'm definitely gonna be adding some compost and fertilizer in here when I plant. And you can plant in two different ways. Now, my grandparents always planted in mounds, and they came from a cold winter climate to Southern California. And the reason you plant in mounds is it gets, uh, the soil in that mound warms up faster in the springtime. So you can get to that 65 degrees a lot sooner than just on flat earth. So if you're planting in mounds, you want those mounds about four feet apart, and you're gonna put four seeds in each of those mounds. Uh, this is if you're planting from seed, not from transplants. Once they've reached about this size where they've got about two leaves on them, and you can see the strongest ones, weed out all the ones, just thin them out, pull them out, or you can transplant them. But you only want two seedlings per hill growing from then on throughout the season. Now, if you're doing transplants, just put two transplants per mound. Now, if you're not growing in mounds, if you are like me and you don't have the need to warm up your soil quickly, you have a shorter uh, season, then you can grow in rows. So in rows, you wanna plant your, you wanna make your rows about four feet apart. And then in the row, you wanna plant your seeds or transplants about two to three feet apart. And the same thing if you're planting seeds, put a couple per spot just so you have that insurance in case one of them doesn't germinate. But you still want to thin them then to one every two to three feet. 
So I'm going to be planting these not in mounds, but not necessarily in rows. This is a little bit of an odd shaped bed. So I'm just going to make sure that they're about three feet apart. I put two shovelfuls of compost at each spot where I was going to plant pumpkins, and then I worked it into the ground. All right, the ground is prepared. We have a spot in full sun. It's going to get lots of summer heat, maybe, if the cold ever ends. And it's time to plant. So I'm going to plant uh, each hill or spot with the same variety. So I'll have a different variety at each spot. So I just want to go through each of these spots and just check to see if there's any roots. As I was digging, certain spots had more than others. Little things like this, that's fine to keep. This, on the other hand, is another story. Get rid of that. All right, so I'm going to plant two again per hill. This is jack-o'-lantern. I'm going to stick the label right there. I'm going to stick the label right here. Now, I always, it always seems like these tend to fade in the sun, so I always face the name north. Um, just a little tip. I'm just going to dig a hole on either side of that label and work in some uh, organic fertilizer. This happens to be Neptune's Harvest. It's a mixture of their crab and lobster shell and their kelp meal, which I use on pretty much everything. And then just go ahead and plant. I'm gonna take mess up the roots just a little. It's a good root system, but it's, it's very new, so it doesn't really need to be messed up at all. But plant that about the level that it was growing in the little pot. And that's it. I'm gonna run drip to this afterwards. If you're direct sowing, planting seeds right into the, uh, the garden, go ahead and put your fertilizer in. We're going to prepare everything the same way. And then we're going to take four seeds. And if you live in a wet climate, you can see how the seeds are very flat. So if you plant them like that in a wet climate and water sits on top before they germinate, it could rot the seed. So always put them in vertically. So about an inch deep, and we're going to do it kind of on the four corners of the circle. So there, 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 and there. And uh, when these come up, then of course we're going to take two of the, the weakest ones out. All right, I've got this area planted. And now it's time to run the drip. And I've already got the drip mainline tube all around this area. So I just need to bring it from the mainline tube to the plants themselves. So I've got the three quarter inch mainline tubing that runs around this area. And I've got quarter inch drip tube. I've got a little barb that connects the two together. Then I have a dripper here called a shrubbler. I'm gonna leave a link down below to Dripworks. This is where I got all of this. We even have a discount code for all of you with them. The best thing about them is this tool here. It's a cutting tool. If you've ever used drip before, you know how hard it is to punch the hole in here and to get the barb into it. So watch this. Punch, put the, the barb in there, poke it in. I'm going to attach the quarter inch tube to that. Bring it to right here in the middle of these two. Give it a cut. Hook the shrubbler on. And now this sprays a water ring about that big. So it'll soak in further than that. All right, all the drip is hooked up and working well at each location. Now, pumpkins are also moisture lovers, so in addition to having that drip there, I'm going to put a nice layer of mulch on each one. And that's going to hold in the moisture, and it's going to keep the weeds down. So now I'm going to show you how to protect these from rabbits, squirrels, birds, 
all of them love this nice, fresh, tiny foliage, and they're gonna come and eat them up if you don't do something about it. And we're gonna do that with tulle. Now this is like, I've heard they make a lot of different things, wedding dresses, probably not in black, tutus, stuff like that. Um, and this is a very, very fine mesh, really fine. And you put it over your plants. Um, this saved me so much last year in many different ways. I wrapped my tomatoes, each tomato, I just took a square of this, wrapped it around, closed pinned it on top on the stem. Squirrels, we don't have rats here, but no, nothing, no rats, no bugs, no birds went after the tomatoes. And it worked the same way last year I had, uh, rabbits out here eating my pumpkins when they were this tiny. I put a long row of tulle over it, tacked it down with some uh, landscape staples. You can use rocks or bricks or whatever you have and leave it loose enough for uh, the plants to grow a little bit. Now, when these are about six inches tall and have a little bit bigger leaves on them, you can probably take the tulle off or at least loosen it up so it can grow a little bit more. But once these are, you know, starting to trail you don't need the tool anymore. You can take it off, save it for the next thing. And you can just get this at any fabric store. Um, I think we got some at Walmart one time. I got this at Joann's Fabrics, or Emily did. All right, so I'm done with this section. Now I did tell you that I would uh, talk about growing these in a smaller space garden, uh, even in containers. You can grow small variety pumpkins and they don't grow very big and you can have a trellis, I grew at my last house watermelons on a teepee. They were sugar baby watermelons, so they just stay about that big. And I supported them. You can support them with um, pantyhose if anybody has those anymore. Or I actually used all those masks that we had to get and then didn't need anymore. Uh, and I just used the cloth mask to cradle that melon. Um, I suppose you could use a bra if you have two right together. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. I'd probably go for a double D and be optimistic at the harvest. But you can grow them on teepees, you can grow them on trellises, you can grow them over a cattle panel arch, um, pretty much anything to get them up off the ground, save that valuable real estate on the ground, and get all those vining crops up into the air. So I'm gonna go up there and till the upper area and get those planted. While I'm doing that, get started on planting your own. If you learned something, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, share it with a gardening friend, and I'll see you next time.